Hi, I'm Dr. Chaudhry. I'm with the University of Cincinnati Brain Tumor Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. Many doctors are looking at a specialized diet called the ketogenic diet for brain tumors. Keto means ketones and genic means to produce. So this is a diet that helps your body produce ketones. This diet has been used for many years in children with severe epilepsy or seizures. In the traditional ketogenic diet, children are placed on a diet that is four parts fat to one part protein and carbohydrates. Many of these children were able to control their seizures after being on the diet for just a short period of time. When the traditional ketogenic diet was tried in adults, there was very little compliance with the diet. This is a very difficult diet, and as you can imagine, it was difficult to stick to. Adults will do anything for their kids, but when it comes to their own health, they were not as successful. There is greater compliance with a modified Atkins diet, more than the traditional ketogenic diet. Many adults can be compliant with this diet, and it still generates ketones, therefore, it's still a ketogenic diet. So how does a ketogenic diet work? In ancient human history, humans went through periods of feasting when the weather was warm and good for growing fresh fruit and vegetables. And then there were periods of long fasting when the weather was colder. Ancient human societies did not have ways to store food, like refrigeration, so many humans got used to long periods of very little intake. Have you ever been told that you can live three days without water, but can live 30 days without food? That's because of ketones. Ketones are generated when the body perceives itself to be in a starvation state. Ketones protect important structures in the body, like the brain and the lungs. Tumors, especially brain tumors, cannot use ketones efficiently for energy. Brain tumors need sugar or glucose to grow and thrive. When you are on a diet that is very low in carbohydrates, then your brain tumor is literally being starved of energy while your brain continues to function. A study conducted by Abdul Wahab and colleagues looked at mice with malignant gliomas in their brain. Half the mice received a standard diet of regular mouse feed and radiation therapy for their tumors. They died very quickly from their brain tumors. However, the mice that received the ketogenic diet with radiation therapy lived much longer and their tumors were undetectable. Even after they went off the diet, their tumors remained undetectable. It is important to note that there is very little data specific to the human brain and human brain tumors, but studies are ongoing. Because this is a medical diet, we have a strict process here at the University of Cincinnati prior to prescribing this diet. At this time, we are the only cancer center in the region studying this diet with a specifically trained team to educate and implement the diet. If you are interested in the diet, you will first meet with your doctor and nurse practitioner. They will get baseline labs to make sure it is safe for you to undergo the diet. Please tell your doctor of any previous history of pancreas issues or gallbladder issues. Also, it is important to tell your doctor of any lactose or dairy intolerance or any allergies to milk and dairy products. Also, if you have a diagnosis of diabetes, you want to let your doctor know. After the initial visit with your doctor, you will meet with a registered dietitian trained in this ketone producing diet. Here at the University of Cincinnati, we use the modified Atkins diet to make it easier for you to stick to the diet and really get the maximum benefit from it. At the appointment with a dietitian, you will get a food diary for six weeks, depending on how many changes you need made or how much help you need in attaining ketosis. The registered dietitian will also determine if you need a transition period to ease yourself into the diet based on your previous carbohydrate and fat intake. You will start the diet a few days prior to your chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Hopefully, you will continue the diet until your first MRI following radiation therapy. The length of the diet will be approximately 10 weeks. During the time of your radiation and chemotherapy, you will get weekly blood work checking for ketones, kidney function, and glucose levels. You may also wish to monitor your ketones and blood glucose levels at home using home testing kits. These are available at your local pharmacy. 
We want your fasting blood glucose to be ideally less than 90. But this may not be possible given a history of diabetes or use of such medications such as steroids, which can cause elevation of blood glucose even if you are very strict on your diet. After six weeks of radiation and chemotherapy, you will get a four week break. At that time, you will remain on the diet until we get your four week post-radiation MRI. After that period, you may remain on the diet with the help of a dietitian, or you can do the diet less rigidly. You can also move to a more plant-based diet, but still very low in processed carbohydrates such as bread and sugar. If you are interested in learning more about the UC Brain Tumor Center, please contact us at 513-584-8642 or visit our website uchealth.com slash brain tumor.